question is what is the message behind inside out 2 Okay, so a little bit ago, I made a video about Inside Out, in which I said it was Pixar's last great movie. And again, just yeah, to reiterate did, here, I'm not did, saying did, that the movies did, they did, did after that are bad. It's just that, in my opinion, they don't quite reach the same level as, like, all of these. Now, Kelsey yeah, and I saw the don't. second one in theaters, and now that it's out on Amazon, I watch it again. And I can finally say that Inside Out 2 is... Uh, actually, like, okay, it's... Wait, wait, so you think Inside Out 2 is mid? Or, or is it, like, mid... But it could have been something, right? I, I don't know. Fine. It's, it's pretty good. But hey, what do you say we talk about it for a little bit? So, come along, kids. Let's take a walk. So, Inside Out 2 is mainly broken up into three, like, parallel plot threads or whatever. What with mean? Riley, Joy, and our new best friend, Anxiety. Things fires are burning. Starts off with us catching up with our good old pal Riley. Riley is still exceptional. Ta -da! And not just because she's the top of her class, Anderson. which by the way, she is. Well, they, Riley can't she's do also a cook. really kind. Riley can't cook for oh, And she's officially a teenager now. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Get ready for her internet search history to be full of the worst AO3 fanfic anyone has ever written. My mother was heavy in debt to a local mafia boss. She was forced to sell me slavery. And so history. I had to move in with my new masters, yeah. Shadow the Hedgehog and Tony the Tiger. Wait, so first thing, Joy and friends fill us in what's been going on between this movie and the first one, and all the big and small ways Riley has changed. Riley's personality islands are still going strong. Glad to see Boy Band Island finally broke up. But Goofball is still monkeying around. <laughs> Where's Family Island? It's right there. Oh, there it is. Well, yeah, it probably wouldn't be so small if parents didn't always somehow get like a thousand times more annoying as soon as you turn 13. Hmm? Coincidence? Now, back in the first movie, the main big MacGuffin thing was Riley's uh -huh. memories and how they relate to the emotions, right? But in this movie, yeah, we've gone one step it, it further, and now we have Riley's beliefs. But we realized her... Yeah, I have Riley believe Riley, um, teenage way, and also, also how small family island was. Like, bro, family island is small because once you turn a teenage man, you get a little annoying of your parents all partying in your situation in life. Islands aren't the only things made by memories. Way down at the root level, these memories were also creating beliefs. Homework should be illegal. <laughs> I'm a really good friend. So the whole thing with beliefs is that her emotions and memories work together to form these like self-affirmations about who she is and how she thinks or whatever. Like being a good friend. Did you know the change in your couch could change the world? It's okay. I drop things all the time. Oh yeah, I'm totally like one of those quirky rom-com main character girls who walks around everywhere like a cat at 3 o'clock in the morning. What are you trying to get about that? What are you trying to get about that? What are you trying to say? Water. Turns out when you put all of those beliefs together, they make the most wonderful thing of all. Her sense of self. I blame farts on other people. Uh, an oldie but a goodie. Was Bridgerton ever actually good, or were we just in lockdown? Oh, that's nice. I can't wait to get into astrology and never take responsibility for my bad personality traits ever again. So part of keeping Riley's sense of self on the right track is that Joey's been sending all of her bad memories to the back of her mind, so she never has to think about them ever again. This is for all no, those no, memories no, that are in about the that. back of the mind. Like, no wrong about that, but I want, I want to see what, what's the point of us sending the bad memory and then keeping the good one. Sometimes you do need to uh, learn a little bit about, about your bad situation so you can overwhelm and, and overcome that. This penalty one, it's weighing on her, so let's lighten the load. A one-way expressway to... We're not going to think about that right now. Woo! Yep, and that's where they stay until about 11.48 p.m. when your brain just randomly goes, Hey, remember that time when you found out all your friends went to the movies and didn't invite you? Yeah. Or like that time when the waiter said, enjoy your food, and you said thanks, you too? Yeah. yeah Remember wrong. when you invested Wait, you years of your life by yourself, relationship and found out the other person just thought of you as a safe stopgap until they found someone they actually liked? 
They re what didn't want to think about. Ever again. Okay, so remember back in the first movie how Joey learned about, like, artificially trying to control Riley's mind was bad or whatever? Yeah. Well, guess who does not remember learning that lesson, apparently? But all the same, one day, despite Joey's best efforts, everything changes. Oh, it's cool beauty red. time! Cool Honey, did, did you see the deodorant I put on your dresser? Shut up, Mom! This family's stupid! No one understands me! Riley, you aren't packed yet? You're always on me! Can't you just lay off for like one second? Anger Billy Riley, Kitchen! What's wrong? Bro, oh, Mom I'm telling y'all, Anger Billy the Custy Junk. Okay, so while all of this is happening, Riley is really big into hockey, right? We saw this back in the first movie. And during one of her games, yeah. a coach from a big hockey high school invites her and her friends to come to a three-day summer hockey camp thing, which is a really big deal, apparently. Congratul congratulations on your win! <gasps> That's the high school coach! Woo! The three of you were impressive! Thanks, Coach Roberts! Look, it's last minute, but every year I do a three-day skills camp. I invite all the best players in the area. I'd love for you girls to come. And so Riley and her best of best friends are off to hockey camp, which is where the majority of the movie takes place. Okay, until we can figure this out, nobody touch the console unless you really need to. So, big weekend for us. What do you want to do? Well, we could finally clean out the... <laughs> Wait, what, what's that face, Dad? What's, what's, uh, what, what's on your mind there, Dad? But just whenever... Yeah, what, 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 what that mind, like... What that trying to do, like... The mom said, it's fine time to clean up, but dad looking like, hmm, after, after that, you, we can get into something like, hmm, we can get into something like, bruh, like, come on, like, you, you know who you really want, want to say. Coach Robert isn't going to be our coach next year. Please. Damn. We, we, we got assigned yeah, to a different well, high school. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. oh no. Oh. Okay. Wow. And so this sets the stage for the rest of the movie, which is that. And now Riley has to figure out how to make new friends for high school. Which feels weirdly small compared to the first movie. Like in the first movie, Riley's entire life is uprooted just all of a sudden, out of nowhere. And she has to move to a new city, live in a new house, go to a new school, and her only friend is thousands of miles away. But then in this movie, it's just like a three day hockey camp, and her friends are still in the same city, they're just not at the same school. Like, I don't know, this feels like way less of a problem. Anyway, so while yeah. Riley's walking into school for camp, it, she it, runs it, into it, the coolest girl problem. ever Good. of all time. Good. They, they are in the same thing, but you're not going in the same school in the same thing. Like, they in the same thing, same state, but you're not going to uh, same school. I don't, I don't get it. I'm Val. <gasps> Everybody act regular. It's Valentina Ortiz. Oh, I'm Val. I know, you're the first. <laughs> She's a red All time girl. Red red junior, your favorite color is red in your skates. What are we saying? You're the one coach told us about. Riley. From Michigan, right? No, uh she's from Minnesota, idiot. Do it, Minnesota, don't it. Sweet. Wait, no, 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 Michigan. Hey, that's what I just said. We cannot correct Val Ortiz. Yeah, that's me, Riley from good old Michigan. <sighs> yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I'm seeing a little too much of myself. Right like, now. Like, why is this yeah, movie got to be so real? Good now, old Riley from Michigan. Like, bro, come on. Uh, why, why, why you have to be so sarcastic about it? Why you have to be sarcastic so about it? I, I can see why I'm sarcastic. Uh, on form, because Riley started being sarcastic and she saw Dallas. The exact moment when Riley gets all of her new emotions like embarrassment, envy, ennui, and the only one that actually matters for this movie, anxiety. Things fires are burning, we be returning if we sail. Hey, Maybe you could just stay in one place? Anything. Love that. And what was your name again? Oh, I'm sorry. I can get ahead of myself. I I'm anxiety. You make Riley happy. Sadness makes her sad. Fear protects her from the scary stuff she can see. And my job is to protect her from the scary stuff she can't see. Yeah, like Fraggles. So like I said, in this movie, they introduce a... What are Fraggles? What are Fraggles? I, I want to know. Like, dropping down a car and tell me what are Fraggles? Like, 
I really want to know where Fraggles is. Bunch of new characters who add pretty much nothing at all to anything. Like, like they're not even plot devices. They just exist. The movie is quite literally just about anxiety, and that's it. Played by Maya. It Hart. is. My tech. team has run all More the data and we're looking at the following likely scenarios. Like, we First, we don't take this camp seriously, and we goof off with Green Castle. Riley looks really oh, uncool in front of Val. Is, you know, like, I've talked about this before in lots of other videos, but using be, celebrities as really voice actors is just so time. like you know, and, like sometimes it's fine. I mean, Amy Poehler is a very funny comedic actor so she's very good as Joy but like all the stuff that Aquafina's in or like in this movie with Maya Hawk it's like it's just they're just not really cut out for this like the scene we just uh, saw oh, right my team what? has run all the data and we're looking at the following likely scenarios first we don't take this camp seriously and we goof off with Brian Grace Riley looks really uncool in front of Val I know this is just a nitpick but Maya Hawk's voice is not at all doing what the character is doing like throughout the movie there's a lot of these weird disconnects between the voice and the character why is using real voice actors such a crazy idea these days Pixar doesn't need celebrity marketing for Inside Out 2, okay? Like, it markets itself, clearly. But whatever. Anyway, so the next chunk of the movie uh, uh, is that anxiety starts uh, to take uh, the uh, reins uh, a bit because Riley's marketing. normal emotions are just uh, not uh, really uh, cutting uh, it anymore. <laughs> Ladies, settle in means settle down. I need your focus. Which means now I'm going to need your cell phones. All of them. Wait, what? what? Are you serious? Uh, 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 you're here to work, not goof around. Got that, Anderson. That's right, kids. The best way to survive middle and high school is never do or say anything ever. And so, taking full control of Riley, anxiety destroys her self-beliefs and emotional groundedness and, and shoots them all the way to the back of her mind. Now Riley's brain is being run exclusively by anxiety. Wow, that sure sounds like it would suck. See, see, I told you. I told you. Envy, embarrassment, and sarcasm is like one of the back of emotion that you really don't really need. Like, uh, the whole show is just about anxiety. Like, we didn't even get to see, like, what envy, embarrassment, or, or, or sarcasm is all about. I am truly sorry. I was so looking forward to working with you guys. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Riley's life is more complex now. It, it requires more sophisticated complex? emotions than all of you. You just aren't more what she needs anymore, than Joy. Than the, uh, You can't just oh, bottle us up. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, you dumb! And did you get it? The emotions are all bottled up. It's like it's like an idiomatic phrase in real life. <laughs> and so this brings us to the third parallel of this. Now, for pretty much the rest of the movie, Joy and friends are stuck doing the exact same story arc as the first movie, which is that, like, you know, in the first movie, Joy and Sadness had to travel through Riley's mind to bring Riley's happy core memories back to the control room. And now in this movie, they have to travel through Riley's mind to bring happy beliefs back to the control room. Like, it's almost exactly the same movie as the first one. Except in the first yeah. movie, the villain is just this abstract concept of, like, the world changing around Riley against her will and her feelings of powerlessness to do anything yeah. about it. And the first one, like, the first emotion that we also all about Riley overcoming and moving to a new town, new city, new state. Now, that was the feeling of the whole thing. The plot. Right? Now, the feeling of this is anxiety. And now we're going to see why anxiety is the biggest feeling inside out, too. About it. But that in this movie, the villain is just this weird little dude. There are some cute and yeah. funny parts along the way, like when they meet Riley's secret video game crush, for example. Totally fine. Can you say denial? Oh. Hi, friends. Welcome. It's so good to have you here with us today. Okay, we're doomed. Indeed. Welcome to your eternal fate. <laughs> Like, I just, what? I don't know, man. I just thought this part was pure genius. You know, like the totally not oh. Dora the Explorer dude over here. Or like this oh, guy who they made look like a PS2 character. Like, this was so inspired. This part's awesome. Or like when Joy's explaining her master plan to everyone about how to stop anxiety. Oh, follow the stream of consciousness. Easy float all the way to the back of the mind. Where all the bad memories are. Exactly. And there we'll find the Riley we know and love. And I tell anxiety, hey, don't worry so much anymore. And she'll say, wow, Joy, I never thought of that before. Before, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's just that easy. Joy, are you hey there, sure that's going to work? A lot right now, but like, that, 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 if you just that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Crap, Mom, you did it. I'm cured. Now, while Joy and friends are doing their little quest thing, Anxiety has full control of Riley, like I said. And Riley is trying her gosh darndest to impress Val and her friends at the expense of Riley's old friends, who she's just being like a big old jerk to. So, Michigan, who's your favorite band? Uh... 
Oh, get up and glow. They're so awesome. Get up and glow. I was all over them in middle school. Serious? You don't still like get up and glow, do you? Yeah, you know, this is one of those like tiny micro childhood drama things where like you really like a thing and then someone else decides that, that thing is stupid and so you have to pretend like you don't like it. But then you hit your 30s and now suddenly you have an entire room full of skippets because they were freaking cool, okay? I've been waiting my whole life for this very moment. <laughs> love get up and glow. That's right. Finally, at the age of 13, Riley has discovered sarcasm and immediately just styles it up to 11. You know what I mean? So awesome. <laughs> Riley, what are you talking about? You love get up and glow. Oh, uh, hey guys. Oh, why are our best friends always trying to hang out with us? Come on, Riley. We just went to their concert. Oh, yeah, we had a great time. I'm telling you, these are some pro-level eye rolls right here, okay? The world has not seen eye rolling this hard since my mom told me she was going to chaperone the 8th grade dare dance, okay? Okay, you know what I'm saying? And, of course, this all manifests inside yeah, Ryan's yeah, yeah, mind as well. What is that? That's a sarcasm! <laughs> okay. Okay. This movie's like 50% dad jokes, you know? Unlike my videos, of course, which are very sophisticated. Okay, so later on, Riley uh -huh. learns that this notebook thing the coach lady has is where she writes down everyone's, like, progress reports or whatever. And, of course, Riley's just dying to know what's in there. So she sneaks out one night and takes a look. <gasps> Not ready yet? Wait! The coach already decided? You know, this part kind of feels like it's supposed to be on the same level as, like, when Riley stole her mom's credit card and ran away from home and all that. Except, like, she's yeah. just looking at her own progress report. Yeah. You, you're not wrong. Not wrong, Alex. Not wrong, okay? It, like, it's supposed to be on the same level as stealing her mom wallet, but it's not like Riley's stealing. All I was doing is sneaking in the office to make sure that she may or not. That's it. It's not like, it's not like she's stealing it. Maybe, maybe. Which I feel like she has every right to see anyway. But all the same, this puts anxiety into hyper mode and she has to come up with the greatest idea thought light bulb of all time. Wait, 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 What if I dyed a single lock of hair? That'll fix everything. Freaking genius. You sure, so sure? The last you sure, you sure? Don't have a piece of my hair. One piece of my hair, right? One piece of my hair. Oh, I'll be, I'll be on top. I'll be, I'll be doll, right? Big girl, big doll, whatever you call it, right? Nah, no, maybe. Nah, 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 nah. They have camp, and the big thing on this day is this hockey match where the coach will allegedly pick who's going to be on the starting team next year or something like that. So Riley's been up all night running drills, shooting pucks. This is her big chance to prove to everyone that she's like totally one of those cool girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. Oh, man. I'm not good enough. You have to score. Anderson. Box. Yeah, Riley just like full on body slams her ex best friend, just Hulk smashes her right into the ground. Yeah. And this takes you us like to the Hulk. big climax of the movie. When Riley gets a yes. penalty box, which means she's probably already failed the test. And the coach is never gonna let her on the team now, which means Val's not gonna want to be her friend. And Riley's gonna go to high school yep. and have no yep. friends and have to eat lunch in the choir room with all the yep. kids who smell like old French onion soup. Yep. AKA me. I'm not good enough. <laughs> you have to score, Riley. Or this will all have been for nothing. Anxiety. And right then, that's when Joy and friends show up because they finally find Riley's, like, positive affirmation atomic fusion reactor <laughs> or, like, whatever this is. And that's when Riley gets hit with a full-on panic attack. You don't get to choose who Riley is. You need to let her go. So because Riley has a panic attack, all is just forgiven, I guess. Like she was super mean to her friends, but they're like, "Hey, so you ignore?" That, yeah, like since Riley got that panic attack, now it's like her friend want to be friend with her again. I don't, I don't give, I don't get it. 
You wait until I get a pain attack to want to be a friend? I'll, I'll get I'll get it. Shortest the whole time, and oh, you made fun I'll of us really in front of all it. the older girls, and you like tried to murder me four minutes ago, but like you're having some feelings, so it's fine. And of course, Joy learns a very important, valuable lesson. Boy. I'm selfish. I'm kind. I'm not good enough. Mistake. I'm nice. I'm mean. I'm a good friend. I'm a terrible I friend. I'm strong. I need help sometimes. It's all important. <gasps> oh, is it Coach's email? <laughs> Hey, look, if you don't make it this year, there's always next year. I know. So, like, Could one thing I find very strange about this movie is that yeah. anxiety is never actually proven right. So, basically, this movie only shows anxiety as having a negative, destructive effects. Even though the whole point of these... You... That is... That is... I don't... That is right, right? Yeah, like, in the whole video, you really don't really see anxiety really proven wrong. Like, she make it seem like she did whatever she did to rally was right. And she never got proven wrong. Is that all emotions are valid from joy to anger to sadness to whatever. Like, all of them have value. Except anxiety, who's just a villain that needs to be ignored. So why don't we take a seat in our special chair? Yeah. That's a great idea. See? Isn't that better? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Not to mention that like all the other new emotions here literally do nothing. <laughs> like, like why yeah. is Envy even here? This movie feels You're like right. they really wanted what, to just make they? a movie about having a panic attack. And then yeah, the whole movie was just about Rob having a panic attack and being herself. Like, what's the point of Envy and Pierceman and Sarcasm? I, sarcasm, we seen, we saw, we, we already seen what sarcasm could have done. But, mainly, you just need sarcasm with anxiety. Right? You can grab embarrassment, and then grab envy, and then toss them right in the trash can. Because you don't really need them at all. And they built everything around that, because everything else in this movie is so unimportant. They even marketed the movie as having a realistic panic attack, which is such a weird but thing to do. use well, as damn. a marketing strategy. I didn't like, know the that Puss in Boots movie also had one of these, but they didn't really talk about it, and so people latched onto it organically, right? But it feels so disingenuous to be like, hey, hey, we're, we're putting a panic attack in that movie too, okay? <laughs> like, what a weird thing to brag about. Yeah. But like, seriously though, if you're someone who has to deal with overactive anxiety, this movie will probably mean a lot to you. Like, it was very specifically made for you. But if you're not that kind of person, there's really not much else here. Like, there's definitely nothing nearly as hard-hitting or Pixar esque as like the death of Bing Bong for example. You know how like Bing Bong's whole thing in this movie represents the death of Riley's childhood and uh -huh. how she can never go back to that time ever again. And like yeah, this movie's big on friendship or rather it's about wanting friends but it doesn't really say much about like friendship itself. Or like Riley hitting puberty is the reason why she has these new emotions but like it doesn't really talk much about growing up as a concept. It's just like Riley's older now therefore she has anxiety. Teehee. As evidenced by the fact that Riley does not gain a single new positive emotion. I guess I just feel like it doesn't hit on its themes nearly as deeply as the first movie did. As an example what I'm talking first about, like, instead of doing a three-day hockey camp, it could have just been hard. about freshman year of high school. And like, at some point, hard. her old friend from Minnesota from the first movie, like, she could come visit or something. And so they hang out and they talk about the good old times and whatever, but then slowly they start to realize that the friendship is kind of over, and they've just grown into different people living different lives, and it's kind of not worth it to hold on to this friendship that was built on something that doesn't really exist anymore. You know, showing that growing up is inevitable, but also painful. People grow apart, things change, and sometimes you just have to say thank you, goodbye. This movie feels like way more more Disney and a lot less Pixar, if that makes sense. I mean, like I said, it's a good movie, but it just doesn't quite have that magic spark to it. You know what I mean?